The deep sea drilling platform is suddenly shrouded in a mysterious fog. Even worse, a more unsettling presence seems to be within the fog. Hello everyone. Today I'm bringing you a recap of the 2023 thriller, The Rig. Workers eagerly discuss their holiday plans on a North Sea drilling platform in the meeting room. Suddenly, the lights flicker and the generators in the engine room shut down. They switch to backup power and everyone heads to the deck's muster point. A power outage on the platform is serious, as it could lead to a dangerous gas leak. Veteran worker Alwyn notices flames on a nearby platform, and the handrails on the walkway start to shake. Platform manager Magnus feels something is wrong and tries to call the rescue ship, but the radios are down, making contact impossible. Suddenly, one of the platform's drill wells bursts into flames due to high pressure. Alwyn rushes to the control room and sees the pressure rising in the well. He asks Magnus if they should cut off the pipeline entirely. Magnus hesitates, knowing this would stop gas flow to the mainland and cause a huge financial loss. But as pressure alarms sound, he orders the pipeline to be shut. Alwyn quickly shuts it and the flames die out. The crisis is narrowly avoided, but they need to find the cause of the problem. Working on a deep sea platform is extremely dangerous and one mistake could be disastrous. As the team prepares to return to work, the platform suddenly shakes violently as if sinking. Workers cling to the railings, their hearts pounding. The shaking stops, but before they can relax, a massive fog rolls in, covering the nearby platform and rescue ship. Soon, they are surrounded by a thick, eerie fog, with visibility dropping to less than a meter. With power restored, the supervisors discuss what could have caused the shaking. They wonder if it was an earthquake, but assistant manager Rose, a geologist, explains that the area's geology is stable and unlikely to cause such tremors. Alwyn, however, says, we keep taking resources from the earth. Maybe this is just a small act of revenge. Magnus decides their main goal is to contact headquarters for help, leaving the cause of the incident to be addressed later. But with the radio down, someone must repair it. Two technicians gear up to head to the signal tower. Baz, a young worker, leads the way. Though nervous, he pushes forward through the thick fog. Suddenly, a seagull flies at him, making him lose his balance. Luckily, his safety harness stops him from falling. Shaken, Baz feels a bit better when the other technician, Fulmer, joins him in the fog and they reach the top of the tower. Fulmer, an experienced communications operator, quickly repairs the radio. Just as Baz is ready to head down, he spots a nearly dead seagull on the tower. Then, unexpectedly, Baz falls from the tower. The platform's medic, Cat, rushes over and confirms Baz is alive. She examines him and finds severe injuries. They need a hospital, but the thick fog makes a helicopter rescue impossible. For now, they can only ease his pain, hoping he survives. Despite the radio repair, they still can't reach headquarters. Rose, the assistant manager, discovers that not only is their platform offline, but all rigs nearby have lost communication too. This has never happened before, and they have no idea why. Magnus is now focused solely on getting everyone home safely. However, Hutton, another worker, accuses Magnus of poor judgment for sending Baz to the tower. Frustrated, Magnus walks away, but Hutton finds a document on his desk. Later, Magnus learns Hutton is stirring up trouble. Hutton gathers the crew on the deck, blaming Magnus for Baz's accident and accusing him of risking their chance to return home. Magnus arrives, trying to stay calm, but Hutton pulls out the document he found, revealing that, due to falling oil prices, headquarters plans to shut down all rigs in the area. This means everyone is about to lose their jobs. Magnus tries to stop him, but it's too late. The crew now knows the truth. Magnus initially plans to announce the job cuts once everyone is safely ashore. Strange black particles start falling from the sky, like ashes. Confused, everyone looks up, wondering where it's coming from. Then, something stranger happens. Baz, who is critically injured, appears on the deck, muttering to himself. The doctor quickly helps him back to the infirmary. After examining him, they see Baz's injuries have improved drastically. Rose asks Baz what happened on the tower, but he remembers nothing. His mind is filled with noise, and he vaguely senses something in the room. Then Baz grows agitated, muttering, it's coming. The doctor calms him and asks what he means. Baz says a massive wave is coming, then drifts off under sedatives. Outside the infirmary, the doctor and Rose exchange worried looks. Baz's injuries seem to be healing too quickly. The other employees are also uneasy, forgetting about the layoffs and wanting to leave the platform. Just then, they see flashing lights across the water, a message from the rescue boat. Lek heads to the helipad to record the signals from the ship, with the strange ash still falling. The message translates to, requesting assistance. Magnus has the crew signal back, 
hoping to coordinate a safe return. Rose objects, arguing that the platform isn't dangerous and wants to resume operations. Magnus reconsiders, thinking the rescue boat may be unsafe either, and decides to assess the situation further. As head of operations, Magnus must plan ahead. Then, he comes to Murchison, the cook, and tells him to prepare dinner as usual today. If the situation doesn't improve by tomorrow, they'll start rationing food. Meanwhile, Lek, standing on the helipad, feels intense pain and goes to the infirmary. The doctor, Cat, isn't there, so he grabs disinfectant himself. As he begins undressing, a smear of black liquid splatters onto the wall, making him anxious. He scrubs harder, but then blood seeps from his tattoos and he begins to lose consciousness. Rose has collected a sample of the ash. Although she's a geologist, she can't tell what it is just by looking. It needs proper analysis. Elsewhere, Baz wakes up feeling much better. He removes the bandage on his hand, shocked to see his wound is fully healed. Checking his reflection, he sees his injured eye has almost healed too, though with dark circles. Suddenly, he senses ominous waves again and feels desperate to escape but intense pain hits his mouth and a tooth falls out, terrifying him. Baz hides in the control room, panicked. Alwyn enters and tries to reassure him, saying the hospital will fix everything. But Baz, feeling haunted, hears strange noises and then sees a vision of Alwyn's death. Terrified, he flees the control room, shaking. Alwyn notices strange circular marks Baz leaves on the glass but can't understand. Worried that Baz's condition could cause an accident, Alwyn grabs a flashlight and heads into the fog to find him. He runs into Fulmer, who is also searching. Hutton, locked in the holding room for rallying the crew against Magnus, escaped through a window after spotting the rescue boat. Fulmer suspects Hutton is trying to use a lifeboat to escape, so he checks each one. While closing a hatch, Fulmer cuts his hand, but ignores it and keeps searching, unaware that Hutton has already reached the control room. Hutton isn't planning to escape alone. He wants to lead the crew off the platform. The distant rescue boat is their hope, so Hutton follows the manual to send an emergency distress signal to it. The crew sees the flashing signal and rushes to the control room, but it's too late. The rescue boat is heading for the platform. Magnus is furious, fearing that boarding the boat could be risky, but Hutton insists staying on the platform is a death trap. Magnus doesn't argue. Instead, he uses the PA system to cancel the evacuation and tells everyone to return to their rooms. Alwyn ignores the order and continues searching for Baz. Alwyn finally finds Baz on the lower deck. Baz seems different, muttering, I saw it. Alwyn asks what he means and Baz says it's a life form from the water. Alwyn grows desperate, knowing the rescue boat is almost here, but Baz resists, gripping Alwyn tightly. Suddenly, Alwyn coughs up water. Just then, the rescue boat approaches but makes a sharp turn at the last second, splashing water everywhere and heading away. The crew is left confused. Has the rescue boat abandoned them? Later, someone finds Alwyn unconscious on the lower deck but Baz is gone. Magnus tries CPR, but Alwyn doesn't make it. The doctor is shocked. Alwyn appears to have drowned, even though he wasn't near water. Magnus is devastated. Alwyn is his most loyal worker. Alwyn isn't the only one who died that night. In his bathroom, Lek is found dead, with blood oozing from his tattoos. The doctor concludes he died from severe blood loss. These strange deaths remind everyone of the ash in the fog. Rose analyzes the ash. She drops a bit of blood onto the sample, and to her horror, the ash separates, revealing tiny life forms that bond with the blood. It turns out that ash is a temporary carrier for these organisms. They seem to repair damage and remove impurities, explaining Baz's sudden recovery. But the method of transmission remains unknown, leaving everyone deeply unsettled. They have never seen life forms like this. Baz stares at the glowing forms in the water, seeing visions of the seabed cracking open. These mysterious organisms seem to send him these images, hinting at a looming disaster. But the rest of the crew is more worried about possible infection. Rose insists that anyone exposed must be isolated until they understand how it spreads. Fulmer, who's been exposed to the ash and has a hand injury, becomes a primary concern. Finally, after a long day and night, the fog clears, revealing another drilling platform in the distance. But it's covered in thick black smoke, suggesting a significant accident. The crew realizes this must be why the rescue boat was diverted. They worry about the people on that rig, but know they can't attempt a rescue with their limited resources. Magnus calls a meeting to focus on their own situation. Now that the fog is gone, they must contact headquarters for a helicopter rescue. First, they must clean the ash residue from the platform and find the missing Baz. 
Determined not to leave anyone behind, Magnus rallies the team to follow his plan. The deluge system sprays the rig with fresh water. Hidden away, Baz feels the cool water, almost like a mother's embrace. Although they're out at sea, finding one person on the rig isn't easy, and teams start sweeping every corner of the platform. Magnus watches from the control room, eyeing the surveillance feeds. But not every area is covered by cameras, and he feels uneasy. Strange events have piled up, especially with the mysterious organisms in the ash. He recalls an incident years ago when 9 million tons of seaweed suddenly appeared in the Caribbean overnight, blocking shipping lanes, a mystery still unsolved. After Magnus leaves, Dr. Cat asks Rose if she's learned anything about the black ash. Rose explains that Earth's oil came from ancient marine life, similar to the fossil she holds, which was found during an earlier survey. The fossil contains spores like those in the ash, dating back about 300 million years to the Permian period, when a mass extinction wiped out 90% of life on land. Rose thinks drilling for oil may have reawakened these ancient spores. Strange events keep happening. Baz waves his hand over the oil in a storage room, creating a faint blue glow. Just then, Garo, who's been looking for Baz, walks in and spots the glowing organisms on the oil. Baz dashes out. Moments later, Hutton and Dunlin find Garo in pain on the floor, claiming Baz attacked him. His expression seems strange, and they notice the organisms floating on the oil. Other teams find odd floating plants on oil-covered surfaces. Suddenly, the rig shakes and everyone grabs hold of the railings for stability. Dunlin notices something is off with Garo and asks him to open his hand, revealing a fallen tooth, a sign he's infected. Garrow then attacks Dunlin and disappears. The crew realizes the infection spreads fast. A head count shows Heather is missing, so Hutton grabs a flashlight and heads off to find her. Heather walks through parts of the rig covered in oil and plants and soon meets Baz. He tells her he's seeing memories from hundreds of millions of years ago. Heather asks him to stop harming people, but Baz insists he didn't kill Alwyn and has to stop a coming disaster. He senses a huge event is near. The ocean floor is collapsing and a massive tsunami is coming. Then Garrow steps out from the shadows, urging Heather to join them. Scared, she backs away. Suddenly, a light flashes. The rig's rescue team is arriving, finally bringing Heather to safety. Just as Magnus starts to relax, he notices the stack's flame has gone out after the recent tremor. The flame burns off excess gas. Without it, gas could backflow and cause an explosion. The automatic ignition system has failed, so someone must ignite it manually, a nearly suicidal task. Magnus decides to do it himself, but Fulmer steps up and insists on handling the dangerous job. The plan is for a crane to bring Fulmer close to the stack, where he'll ignite it with a flare gun while keeping some distance. Magnus personally oversees the operation, watching tensely. Halfway there, Magnus orders Fulmer to stop, worried he's too close. Fulmer realizes he has no clear shot, so he unhooks his safety line and steps closer. Holding their breath, the crew watches as Fulmer stops just five meters from the stack, raises the flare gun, and fires. Thankfully, he retreats just enough and his protective gear shields him from severe harm. His brave act saves the platform for now. At the moment, Baz senses a message from the ancient organisms. The main pipeline to the ocean floor is the genuine threat. They realize they need to shut down the main pipeline entirely, but they don't have authorization. In the operational room, Baz watches the green plants and floating glow, coming up with a bold plan. Now feeling better, Fulmer heads to Rose's lab to help figure out these ancient organisms. Rose explains that the bacteria communicate in groups, which might explain Baz's visions. Fulmer is curious how these ancient bacteria have survived. Rose adds that some bacteria can stay dormant for millions of years and wake up later. Without realizing it, Fulmer starts drawing circular patterns again and again. Suddenly, Magnus calls them to the control room. The main pipeline's pressure has spiked, and cameras show Baz and Garrow opening valves non-stop. Fulmer tries to close them remotely, but it doesn't work. Going in person would be risky. Rose suggests using a submersible to shut the valve on the seafloor to release the pressure. Baz and Garrow watch the pipeline nervously as the submersible descends, hoping the plan works. The camera on the submersible shows blue lights glowing in a circle on the ocean floor. They can't investigate now. The pressure needs to be fixed first. Operator Easter carefully guides the submersible, closing the valve, and the pipeline pressure drops immediately. Baz sees the main pipeline shut down, but still feels uneasy. He knows the system could reopen it, and only a manual reprogramming can stop it permanently. Fulmer, the communications chief, is the only one who can handle this. Meanwhile, the crew in the control room notices their phones have signal again. Communications are finally back, 
Magnus quickly contacts the Coast Guard, and Fulmer looks up information about the ring. Many crew members contact their families immediately. Just as Fulmer discovers key information, the network cuts out again. Meanwhile, Magnus hears panicked screams from the Coast Guard's end before the line goes silent. Dr. Cat is devastated when she learns that the coastal city where her wife lives is also covered in the strange fog. She tries to warn her to stay indoors, but their video call disconnects. It's clear now, not just the platform, but the cities along the coast are also in danger. Could this be an extinction-level event? Worried about their families, the crew is more desperate to get home. Someone suggests using lifeboats to escape, but Magnus quickly shuts it down. They're too far from the coast, and it wouldn't be safe. The crew's hope starts to crumble, and the room fills with fear and frustration. Feeling the weight of responsibility, Magnus looks overwhelmed by the rising pressure. Noticing that Fulmer isn't at the meeting, Rose finds him staring at his healed wounds in the bathroom. He realizes these ancient organisms are in him now. Rose tries to reassure him, but Fulmer is still shaken. He hears Baz's voice calling to him in his mind. Then Fulmer heads to Baz's operational area. Dr. Cat spots him and follows quickly. Fulmer mutters an apology as he opens the isolation gate and Cat slips in after him. She's shocked by what she sees. The entire operational area is overgrown with green plants. Blue, glowing particles float in the air, but they don't invade her, possibly because she's two months pregnant. These organisms seem instinctively protective of new life. Rose pulls her out just in time, but Cat is still deeply shaken. Moments later, the crew spots a faint light on the sea and rushes onto the deck, their hopes soaring. Could this finally be the rescue they've been waiting for? They quickly put on life jackets, but as the light draws nearer, their excitement fades. It's not a rescue, it's just a lifeboat drifting over from the neighboring platform. Earlier that day, the neighboring platform had a disaster. Dunlin and Hutton argue against letting survivors on board, fearing they might be infected. But Rose believes they're all colleagues and can't be abandoned. When the lifeboat arrives, it's full of survivors. Rose wants them isolated and tested, but a large, commanding man named Cope, claiming to be a senior executive, ignores her request. He heads straight to the control room to check the main pipeline. Rose asks about the neighboring platform's destruction, and Coke dismisses it as a minor accident from a pressure malfunction. His tone is cold and dismissive. Rose suspects the disaster may be connected to the ancient organisms and resumes studying the circular pattern. Dr. Cat observes that it looks like tree rings, and Rose realizes that the rings match Earth's major extinction events. The current ring points to a possible new mass extinction, as if these organisms warn of impending doom. Earth has experienced four mass extinctions, each wiping out 90% of life, with only some microbes surviving. Now, a fifth extinction seems near. Those infected by the organisms sense this impending crisis. The key threat is the pipeline that connects the platform to the seabed. It must be shut down for any chance of survival. Fulmer, the communications chief, doesn't fully understand how it all links to an apocalypse, but he starts closing the valves through the control system. Meanwhile, Koch starts a secret plan. As a senior executive, he gathers a few employees, including Hutton, Dunlin, and the cook, Murchison. Coke tells them the company is running an experiment to keep the oil field open, promising they'll keep their jobs if it succeeds. With layoffs looming, the offer is tempting, and they agree to join him. Coke's plan hinges on keeping the pipeline open, but Baz, Fulmer, and others are in the way. Coke explains they'll pump carbon dioxide into the fire suppression system in that area, forcing Baz and the others to pass out. The group suits up in protective gear, ready to carry out Coke's orders and take control of that area. In the operational area, Fulmer and the team are still trying to shut down the main pipeline permanently, but they lack the necessary permissions. Fulmer attempts to disconnect the hardware, but nothing works. It seems the platform was built to prevent a total shutdown, as closing the pipeline would cause massive financial loss. Baz tells Fulmer that shutting the pipeline is crucial. He believes the ancient organisms would retaliate if provoked, as seen in the explosion on the neighboring platform. The neighboring rig had been pumping unknown gas into the ocean floor, sparking a violent response from the organism. Hutton and his team connect the gas to the fire suppression system and activate it, filling Baz's area with the toxic substance. Fulmer realizes something's wrong and tries to escape. Garrow spots Hutton and questions him, but suddenly collapses, coughing up blood that splatters on Hutton's mask. Understanding that the gas isn't carbon dioxide but a deadly toxin, Dunlin warns Fulmer, Baz, and others to flee. 
Hutton and the cook retreat, but Coke, watching from the control room, seals the doors, locking Dunlin inside. The gas quickly spreads, killing the green plants in the corridors, and Baz collapses. Fulmer races to the fire suppression control box, but without a key, he can't turn it off and eventually succumbs. In the control room, Coke is thrilled that his plan is working. Dr. Cat enters, horrified at what she sees on the surveillance footage, immediately alerts Magnus and the others. Coke defends his actions, claiming that killing the organisms is the only way Way to protect humanity. Rose argues that trying to destroy these ancient life forms, which have survived for millions of years, is reckless. Magnus, refusing to debate, focuses on rescuing their trapped team. However, the fire suppression system can only be shut down manually from within the operational area, meaning someone must go in to stop it. Magnus opens the isolation door, and Rose, worried for Fulmer and the others, grabs Hutton's oxygen tank and rushes into the gas-filled area. She finds Dunlin's lifeless body near the exit, shocked by the withered plants that reveal how dangerous the gas is. Following the corridor, she reaches Fulmer lying on the ground. She quickly shuts down the fire suppression system to stop the gas and gives Fulmer an oxygen mask, hoping he'll wake up. When that doesn't work, blue lights suddenly glow from the withered plants. The ancient life forms aren't entirely dead. The corridor fills with blue specks once more, and Fulmer, infected by these organisms, begins to revive. Relieved, Rose helps him to his feet and guides him out. The first infected, Baz, also awakes as new green plants grow around him. Sadly, Garrow doesn't survive. The loss of two employees leaves Hutton racked with guilt, realizing Coke manipulated him. Magnus doesn't blame him, knowing the true villain is Coke. Instead, he urges Hutton to fight back. Later, Magnus meets Fulmer and Rose in the corridor, and they agree that Coke must be stopped before he endangers everyone. Gazing at Garrow's body, Baz envisions a mysterious ring of light in the ocean again, with the outer ring slowly closing. Harish, a survivor from the neighboring platform, reveals that Coke took control of their rig, using the main pipeline to inject something into the seabed as a test. This caused the platform to explode. Later, Coke is brought in, and he admits the truth. Coke explains that ancient organisms at the undersea oil fields are transforming oil into organic matter, making it useless. The oil company tried eliminating the microorganisms by injecting toxic gas into the seabed to protect profits. However, the organisms proved resilient and retaliated, doubling the pipeline pressure and causing the explosion on the neighboring platform. Coke defends his actions, claiming these ancient organisms don't just contaminate oil, but can invade human bodies. He believes if they aren't stopped, they could endanger humanity. His aggression, however, has angered the organisms. A more extensive retaliation may be coming soon. The ancient angry organisms have also cut off communication with Boz. Fulmer, who is infected by the organisms, becomes the key figure. At Rose's urging, he tries to contact the organisms, hoping for a peaceful solution. But what he senses is disturbing. The organisms plan to trigger a massive undersea landslide, which would create a tsunami large enough to devastate coastal cities. Suddenly, cracks spread across the ocean floor, and the platform shakes violently. Though the tremors stop, Magnus feels it's only the start of the organism's revenge. Panicked, he seeks out Coke and expresses his concern. Coke claims he can arrange a rescue helicopter if Magnus agrees to use the main pipeline to attack the organisms again. Back in the control room, Magnus announces Coke's plan. The crew is horrified, arguing it will only provoke the organisms further. Even if they escape by helicopter, it won't stop the global threat. Magnus tries to justify the plan, thinking Coke might succeed in eradicating the organisms. But Fulmer, knowing their resilience, insists the organisms are too powerful to be destroyed by one platform's resources. Rose agrees, adding that they may already spread throughout the ocean, making eradication impossible. She insists their only hope is to find a way to make peace with these ancient beings. Coke interrupts, saying that one must destroy the other whenever two intelligent species meet. Rose counters, insisting that many species survive through cooperation. Frustrated, Coke declares Rose is fired, but Magnus steps in, telling him to be quiet. Rose suggests that Magnus talk to Baz, who might help calm the organisms. Magnus agrees, wanting to save Baz if possible, and instructs Hutton to watch Coke. Reaching the operational area, they pass Dunlin's body, which is covered in plant growth. Saddened, Magnus closes his eyes, vowing to protect the remaining crew. The corridor is overgrown, with plants waist-high. 
They find Baz, who is staring at a glowing orb. Magnus assures him they'll stop any attacks on the organisms, but tearful Baz says it's too late. The organisms have cut him off. Baz collapses in despair. Meanwhile, Coke, up to something again, approaches Harish, a survivor from the neighboring platform. He promises a safe escape if Harish helps him reopen the main pipeline and continue injecting the toxic gas. Remembering the neighboring platform's fate, Harish hesitates but follows Coke to the control room. When Harish suggests warning the crew, Coke coldly refuses, saying they had their chance. Secretly, Harish activates the platform's broadcast system, transmitting their conversation across the platform. On the broadcast, Coke's intentions are laid bare. He declares that only he matters, and if the platform explodes, he'll survive since a rescue helicopter is already on its way. Horrified, the crew rushes toward the control room. At that moment, a violent tremor from the seabed shakes the entire platform more intensely than before. Coke realizes the organisms are attacking and activates the pipeline's delivery system. Dr. Cat and others arrive in time to hear the helicopter request permission to land. Coke leaves the control room with perfect timing and heads for the helipad. Coke reaches the helipad, confident, only to find Hutton waiting for him. Hutton accuses him of throwing the platform into chaos and demands accountability. Coke argues that there's room for everyone to escape if he survives. Reluctantly, Hutton lets him go, focusing instead on safely evacuating the rest of the crew. He begins organizing the crew for evacuation, keeping a close watch on Coke to prevent his further schemes. The crew rushes to the helipad for escape, but the cook notices Magnus, Fulmer, and others are missing. They're still in the operational area, where the blue glow intensifies. Rose wants one last attempt to communicate with the ancient organisms, hoping to prevent disaster. She steps forward, but the glowing specks avoid her, forming a ring that symbolizes the fifth mass extinction. The organisms have given up on peace. Suddenly, cracks spread across the seafloor, triggering a massive undersea landslide that damages the platform further. Realizing peace is no longer possible, Magnus and the others leave. Just as they reach the exit, Baz stops, realizing that the organisms use plants to nourish themselves, forming a symbiotic bond. Believing his life is a gift from them, he gives himself back, hoping this sacrifice might show humanity's goodwill. Magnus nods respectfully to Baz and leaves. As they reach the helipad, Hutton and others anxiously await them. They board the helicopter, reducing it to rubble. Baz, meanwhile, walks toward the glowing light and merges with it. As the helicopter flies away, the crew watches in horror as the massive wave heads toward the coastline. Dr. Cat, fearing for her family, urges the pilot to hurry. Then Coke says the helicopter isn't taking them home. Confused at first, they soon realize the tragic reality. There may be no home left to return to. In a distant coastal city, Cat's wife feels the ground tremble. She looks out her window in terror. A giant wave is rushing toward her. This concludes the Rig Season 1 recap. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel, click the bell, and select all for more thrilling recaps. See you in the next video.